I've got a few places to turn to as we continue with this series on the battle in the mind. Amen. We'll look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, a couple of familiar passages, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and then I want you to find also, if you would, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So we're at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll be looking up several verses tonight, I hope, and so have your hands and fingers ready to roll and ready to move. Appreciate the feedback on this series and uh, folks have been helped and I trust that tonight uh, God will help me to help you, amen? Or should I say use me to help you? And so in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, are we there yet? 1 Corinthians 10, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Notice verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen. A time to be born and a time to die. Amen. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Amen. A time to kill and a time to heal. Amen. A time to break down and a time to build up. Amen. A time to weep and a time to laugh. Amen. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Amen. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Amen. We'll stop there, hold your hand there, go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, another familiar verse, and I hope, I'm hoping that I will be able to make the connection here between the two. You may wonder how in the world do they connect, uh, but I hope that it, they will. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Amen. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, Amen. but will with the temptation also make a way to escape Amen. that ye may be able to bear it. Praise the Lord. All right, we'll pray and we'll begin. Father, thank you for this evening. I pray your blessing upon the service and upon my preaching. Lord, I recognize once again that I need thee. I cannot do this without you, for without you we can do absolutely nothing. Amen. We can't listen, we can't preach, we can't teach, we can't uh, minister. We can't even live the Christian life, Lord, without you. And so I pray tonight, Lord, that as we hear your word, that you would take your word and speak to our hearts. Lord, I trust and I do hope and believe it's going to be an encouraging message. And so I pray, Lord, that it would do that very thing. Please remove any distractions from our minds and from this room tonight. Fill me afresh and anew with thy spirit, and I do pray for liberty tonight in the pulpit. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, for some time now, we have been in this series, a, The Battle in the Mind. And of course, the idea of this series is rooted in the biblical truth that we find all the way back, and you can turn there if you like. I think it's a very important verse in Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Where the Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So again, I don't mean to belabor this thing, but I just want to lay this foundation once again, that how you and I think, what we dwell upon in our minds, what we muse on, what we're uh, thinking about, produces emotions. Notice your chart there at the top of your sheet. And those emotions in our heart are the driving forces behind what we do. Amen. Which means that our behavior, what you and I do, our response to and our attitude towards the events that take place in our lives, the circumstances that you and I deal with, the people that we deal with, can all be traced back to the primary root cause of our thinking. Amen. You ever short-fused? No, not me, right? That's what we say. That can be traced back to our thinking. You see, if we're thinking biblically, it will produce biblical behavior. And if we are not thinking biblically, it will not produce bi biblical behavior. Which means this, that it's vitally important, and that's really the whole crux of the series here, 
It is vitally important that you and I do not let our thinking control us, but instead we purposefully control our thinking. And that's what we're dealing with tonight. And by the way, it can be done. Turn over again to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 as we are reminded of this verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is a great verse to really establish this principle. We see casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Notice, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We're told to think on these things, control our thinking. We are to cast down imaginations. We are to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Sounds like you and I can indeed purposefully control our thinking, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Now last week we looked at one particular area of thinking that is vital to experiencing peace and joy, and that is the area of forgiveness. And I preached on peace through forgiveness. Tonight I'd like to deal with another area where how we think is vital to you and I experiencing peace and joy and all those things that the Lord promised, contentment in the Christian life. And that is, notice, the area of the seasons of life. I want to preach on the subject, notice, peace through the seasons of life. Now look back again in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. As I said, we're going to be flipping a lot tonight. But notice that we read that in verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. In other, in other words, there are certain seasons that takes place in every person's life. You and I go through seasons, changes, if you will, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, notice there is a time to be born. That's a season. There's a time to die. Amen. There's a time, as we read in our verse, to plant and a time to pluck up. Amen. There's a time to kill and a time to heal and so on. My point is that the way in you and I respond to these seasons the way that we think through them will determine whether or not we experience the peace and the joy that God desires for us. In other words, the battle as you and I go through these different seasons of life, and I'm going to get into them hopefully in a moment here, this battle is won in the mind if we're going to have victory. Because these seasons that we deal with are not always and usually are not easy. And so tonight I want to ask this question, are you having peace and joy through the seasons of life? Good. You may say, well, I used to have peace and joy when I was a young person or I was a new Christian, uh, uh, but uh, you know, some things happened in my life. What was that? Seasons, changes, events? What caused you then to change what you were? To lose that joy, to lose that peace? Maybe it was a season of life that you and I don't respond very well to. So tonight let's look at several Bible truths as we consider peace through the seasons of life. Notice number one, write this down if you would please, the reality of the seasons of life. Our text describes what I'm going to call, and I, just for lack of a better phrase, junctions of change that all of us face throughout the course of our lives. In other words, there are times in life, as you and I go through this journey of life, God gives us so many years. We don't know what they are. We don't know how many they are. And as we go through this life uh, uh, day by day, there are times that you and I are going to have to deal with change. Amen. Now, if you're like me, I don't like change. They might like change. We like things the same, don't we? I like things to say the same, but it's not, that is not a realistic, that is not a biblical view of life. Amen. You see, the life seasons that you and I face from the time we're born till the time we die bring many, many changes. Amen. Some of the changes occur as a result of intentional choices that we make. Other changes occur as a result of things that God allows to come into our lives. So sometimes it changes because we make choices. Others because God allows things in our lives. And, and, and others occur just because of the natural course of life. 
Now let me try to clear this up in case I'm confusing some of you with what I'm trying to say. Some of these junctions of change in life include, and you want to write these things down, just to give you an idea. How about this one, getting married? Amen. Do you know that getting married in the will of God is a wonderful thing? All husbands say amen right there. Amen. Wives can say amen, amen. too. Proverbs 18.22, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. But understand that getting married also brings many changes into a person's life. You're accustomed to doing things alone before you're married. You're accustomed to being single. You're accustomed to living with your parents or living on your own. You're accustomed for, for pay, to paying only for your own things being responsible only for yourself. But then you get married. Again, it's wonderful in the will of God. I, I, I think we're all happy we're married tonight. Amen, if you are. Amen. But my point is this. When you do that, understand what happens. Life changes. Amen. It changes. And you have to deal with those changes and your thought processes through them. Hey, there's another one. Write this one down as well. How about this? Here's a nice change for you. When you have children. Amen. Psalm 127 and verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. No doubt having children is a blessing. Amen. Hey, man, I was wondering how am I going to say that tonight. But having children, understand what it does. It brings many changes into a person's life. Uh, it changes, for, uh, for example, the amount of sleep you get. We're having a child. It's our first child. Praise the Lord. Get all the sleep you can now. Amen. You're not going to be getting it for about the next 18 years. <laughs> for one reason or another, amen. Amen. Having children changes the responsibilities you have. Uh, you're now responsible for others who are totally dependent upon you. That's a change. Right. You have to feed them. You have to bathe them. You have to change them. It changes your financial responsibilities. Having children brings dramatic changes to life. How about this junction of change? You might want to write this down. The empty nest. Or maybe we could call it the emptying nest. It's an emptying nest. It's a process, is it not? But when a family is used to being together for years and doing things together for years as a unit, then one by one the children go off to college or they get married uh, and the house begins to slowly empty out and it becomes about you and your spouse alone. That's a change you have to deal with. Amen. We could say there's blessings to it, and there is, but there's changes as well. How about this one? Aging. Aging is a part of life. You know, when I was a young man, uh, when I say young man, I'm talking about in my early 20s, I used to think, that's not going to happen to me. I'm going to be healthy till, for the rest of my life. I was so foolish. <laughs> I just going to run and work out and do all those things and not. Ecclesiastes 9.3 tells us about an event that happens to all of us, and that is this, we are all headed for the grave. Amen. And aging brings many, many changes, and most of God's people said amen right there. Amen. Our bodies break down. Amen. Our bodies slow down. Our hearing gets worse. Our memory gets worse. Our memory gets worse. Our memory... Oh, did I say that? Amen. Our sight gets dim. Amen. Diseases may set in. The bones ache. The hair falls out for most of us. The reality that death... Is, am I encouraging us all tonight? Amen. <laughs> well, I'll start crying in a moment. But how about the reality that death is approaching? Amen. You begin to know more people in heaven than you know on earth. And that brings changes. Not long ago, I was in, well, I was actually go just about every week into some of the nursing homes. Of course, I see Brother Fry and others. I try to get there at least every week or two. And 
And uh, sometimes Justin Caro goes with me, and it's kind of interesting because we were in one of them a couple weeks ago. And, you know, it's a long walk in the hallway to people's rooms, and you, you see a lot of people in wheelchairs, and you see a lot of sad situations. And, I, and we went in, and we talked to the person we were there to see, and we had prayer, and we left. And as we're walking out, he kind of looked at me, and he made this statement. He says, you know what? Getting old is no fun, is it? And it's true, isn't it? Changes, seasons that you and I have to deal with. How about this? Another junction of change, one last one we'll deal with, is an unexpected tragedy that takes place. Amen. Or a trial, maybe sudden failing health in your own body or in the body of a loved one, maybe an illness, maybe you experience the death of a child or a spouse uh, or where your life uh, somehow through this is altered in just a moment. Everything changes uh, and your direction in life is suddenly changed. Amen. And your life will never be the same again. Now, although it's not appealing to admit... These seasons of life are a reality. Job chapter 14 and verse 1, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Amen. We live in a world of trouble. Ecclesiastes 2.23, for all his days are sorrows and his travail grief. Yea, his heart taketh no rest in the night. This is also vanity. Do you realize this is a reality? Seasons of life. You know, the media repeatedly portrays a life that does not exist. Have we figured that out yet? I hope we have. Hollywood, the movies, and television, they try to portray something that does not exist. And by the way, that messes with our thinking. Amen. For example, you'll see a commercial or an advertisement for an investment broker, and they show you a, the picture of a retired husband and wife that are on the sailboat, and they're just sailing the Caribbean in their retirement. That's what they're doing. And they try to give you the idea uh, that if you contact this investment broker and let him take care of you, that that's what your retirement's going to be like. You'll just be sailing around the Caribbean in the last times of your years. That's not reality. Amen. Can I ask all of us, this crowd that's in here tonight, uh, can you name one retired couple that you know that's spending their retirement sailing around the Caribbean? Does anybody know anybody like that? It's not real. My point is this. Your life and my life is going to face many seasons. We may look at them and say, I don't want to face those seasons. Wait a minute. They are a reality. Amen. I know God can take us out of this world in a moment, but I understand that. But every season of life that you and I face uh, brings with it its own unique challenges. And as believers, we are to choose. We must choose to respond and think godly and think biblically so that you and I, through every season that you and I face, can have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. You say, can that be? Can that be? I say, yes, it can. Amen. Amen. So we see, number one, the reality of the seasons of life. Notice number two, if you would, the reaction to the seasons of life. Now go over to 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13, and we'll see if I can't tie this in. As I said, most of us don't like changes. And what we often do, and you may want to jot these three words down, if we're not careful, we can resist the changes that life seasons bring. We can resent the changes that life seasons bring. We can either, even become bitter to the changes that life's seasons bring. That's a tongue twister, and I said it three times there. But it doesn't have to be that way. Right. We, we shouldn't be resist these seasons. We shouldn't resent these changes. We shouldn't become bitter towards them. So how are we to react to them? How are we to think? I think the key is here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Notice, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now the word temptation here has to do with a trial. 
Not a solicitation to do evil. He's not talking about solicitation to sin. He's talking about a trial. And I'm going to apply this word, to a temptation, to the trials that every season of life brings that you and I face. And I believe as we look at this verse and we apply it to what we're dealing with tonight, I believe we'll find a formula that will help you and I think biblically through every season of life, no matter what season you're going through. Amen. Amen. You say, what, are, what is this formula? Well, notice some of the phrases. I'm just going to take it apart. Uh, if we are to think biblically, we must remember three things as we approach or enter into every season of life. Letter A or number one at the bottom is this. Notice God's, write it down, affirmation. God's affirmation. You say, what's he affirming? He says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. God is affirming to us something here, that you and I have to remember something very important, that the seasons of life that we experience, that the changes that you and I go through, that the trials and the difficulties that, all, that, that we face, understand, write it down, they are all common to man. In other words, the things that you and I go through, every season that you and I face, every trial and difficulty that we face, uh, uh, they are, notice, they are not new. Amen. They are not unique to this world. You are not the first person to be going through these things, and you will not be the last Amen. either. Right. You're not the first person to get married. You're not the first person to have children. You're not the first person uh, to have to deal with the empty nest. You're not the first person that has to deal with the aging process. And you're not the first person that has gone through a tragedy. Amen. Now, trials and tragedies uh, and changes in life are all a part of this human journey. Now, please understand tonight, I am not in no way minimizing the difficulty of your journey or mine. I'm not saying here, well, suck it up and just, you know, uh, be tough. I'm not saying that. It is difficult. I'm not minimizing what you're going through. I'm not minimizing the trial, not at all. But I am universalizing the difficulty of the journey, meaning that it is something that is common to man. And what you are going through and what I go through, whatever it is, uh, uh, is a part of God's plan for your life. You know, if we believe that, I want you to turn the page over because I'm going to run through these rather quickly. But if we really believe that these, are not a common, these things are common to man, then we will respond in this way. Number one, we will accept immediately what you cannot change. Accept the circumstance. Accept the trial. Accept uh, the fact that, yes, you have children to deal with. Yes, you have marriage things you have to deal with. Accept immediately things that you cannot change. Amen. It's no fun losing your hair. <laughs> Amen. I have a granddaughter that constantly reminds me of how much hair I don't have. <laughs> I used to like her. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love her. But every time I see her and sit down, she says, Poppy, what, what's happening to your hair? Or what happened to your hair? And I say, how does a little, I'll just say it, girl, so you, you, you ruled out some of them. How does she know that sort of thing that it's supposed to be there? I mean, I don't know. You have a little baby brother that doesn't have hair. You don't ask him that question. But anyway, I just got to accept it. I can't change it. Amen? Amen? And by the way, whatever trial you're in, whatever difficulty you're going through, understand it's, if it's not something you caused yourself, accept immediately what you cannot change. This is my lot in life. 
I'm going to have this sickness. I'm going to have this disease. My body is going to break down. Whatever it is, uh, we have to accept immediately what we cannot change. And then number two, write this down. Embrace it as God's plan. Just embrace it. This is part of it. Uh, you know, we, we don't write our own script. And if we did write our own script, none of us would write it the way it's coming out. We'd write it different. God writes our script. Amen. He is in charge of our lives. Uh, and if it's something that we cannot control, uh, we are to accept immediately what we cannot change and then embrace it as God's plan. Amen. And then number three is this. See the good in it. I'm still searching for that with my hair. I think I know what it is. I look better in a hat than most people. I have a smaller hat size because uh, I can put a smaller hat on my head without hair. I'm just trying to be a little funny. But the truth is this. See the good in it. Amen. You say, how can I see uh, any? That's the problem. You're not thinking right. Whatever is happening to you, whatever you're going through, whatever difficulty you're facing, whatever tragedy you're experiencing, understand, uh, see the good in it. There is good in there somewhere. Amen. Amen. If you don't think there is, just take a journey with me through one of these nursing homes, Amen. and you'll see how blessed you really are. Amen. Thomas Edison was an American inventor and businessman. He was born in 1847. We all know about him. Died in 1931. He invented many things, Thomas Edison. The phonograph, the motion picture camera, and the electric light bulb. Praise the Lord for light. Amen. One December evening, when Edison was 67 years old, a fire broke out in his plant. With all the things that he had, all of his chemicals, all, the, all of the storage things that he had, all of it, packing compound, compounds, flammable goods, everything went up in a moment. All of his assets went up in smoke. And at 67 years old, he could have been washed out. Did you know that Edison's son saw Edison in the plant yard when the fire was going on, actually outside of the building, and he was running to his son, and he said to his son this, and it startled his son because he thought he'd be frantic. He said, son, go get your mom. Tell her friends. He said, what? He said, they'll never see a fire like this again. <laughs> Look at all the colors. Look at all the chemical. This, this is beautiful. Go, go, go get them. Get your mom. Tell, them, tell her to call everybody to see this. <laughs> huh? A little later, as the fire was still burning out, he made this statement. He said, well, we just cleaned house and got rid of a lot of rubbish. <laughs> By the way, it's a lot quicker than the Goodwill store, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. At 5.30 the next morning, when the fire was barely under control, he called all of his employees together, and here's what he said to them. Men and ladies, we're rebuilding. Amen. Amen. Do you know within a year, at 67 years old, within a year, they were bringing in $20 million in profits. I don't know about Edison's theology or his religion, but I do know this. His outlook right there was right. Amen. He saw the good in it. So first we must remember God's affirmation that what you're going through is part of life. It's others have gone through it. I'm not minimizing it. But then secondly, don't forget, think on God's faithfulness. Notice there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Notice the phrase, but God is faithful. May I put it this way? It is not about our faithfulness. It's about God's faithfulness. Amen. Remember that our God is fully aware of your situation. He, he has a divine purpose for this season in your life. Uh, he has a divine purpose for what he has allowed in your life. And he has a greater plan than what appears. And thank God he'll be faithful to us through it. He will not abandon us during any season of life. Amen. He won't. 
Hebrews 13, 5, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. Whatever you're going through, he's there. He's with you. He knows what's going on, and God is faithful. He will not leave you. Amen. Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Joshua 1, 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. You see, whatever season that you're facing, whatever it is that you are going through in this journey of life, understand God will remain faithful to us even if we do not. Amen. You say, really? Really? You know, 2 Timothy 2.13 says this, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. He's faithful to us because of who he is, not because of our goodness, because of who our God is, uh, who has promised, I won't leave you, I will not forsake you, I will not fail you. You may feel weak, uh, you may feel like you can't do anything, uh, but I am there for you, and I will get you through this. Our God is faithful. But there's a third thing I want you to notice as we think, we, if we're to think biblically about these seasons. God's affirmation, number, letter A. God's faithfulness, letter B. And then letter C, write this down. God's fence. You say, what? I'll explain it in a second. Notice he says, God is faithful, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. I just can't bear this trial. I can't bear this season of life. I can't bear this illness. I can't bear this disease. I can't bear going through this, uh, this trouble. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Amen. Yes, we can. He enables us, God's fence. Do you know that there is a divine fence that limits our circumstances? God will never allow a circumstance in our life in our, to our lives that we are unable to deal with. He'll never allow a season in our life uh, that we cannot handle with God. We can get through it uh, victoriously. He always provides a way of escape. Praise the Lord. We're able to bear it. Amen. Now, it may not be easy. I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, it may be very difficult. He, he, he may push you to your limit, and God may push us uh, to the edge, uh, and it may bring forth many tears in our lives, uh, and he may press us even beyond what we think ourselves can handle. But understand, we can have victory through every season of life. Oh, Romans 8, 37, I'll just read it, uh, it reads this. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. One preacher put it this way, he said this, God may push us, but he will not crush us. Amen. He wants to develop us, not to destroy us. So if you and I face a season, whatever that season may be, and we fail, understand that it is us. We are the ones that allowed that situation to crush us, not God. Amen. We did. God's goal is always to strengthen us. God's goal is always through every season of life, every trial, to, to build our faith, uh, to bring forth good, uh, and that we might bring uh, glory to him in that season of life. So whatever you're going through tonight, whatever season it is, you, you pick it out. May the Lord uh, convict you of what it is. Uh, remember, God knows exactly how much you and I can take. Amen. And if we're going to think biblically through these seasons, we have to remember, notice again, God's affirmation. Accept immediately what you cannot change. Embrace it as God's plan. See the good in it. God's a faithfulness that he will remain face, faithful uh, through it. He will not leave us nor forsake us. And then God's fence. Uh, he will not allow it, this thing to crush us. Amen. You know, even as a preacher, I, I can believe academically 
that truth. I, I, I can even quote the verses, many of them we said tonight, and so can you. A, a, and I can know it up here, yet still as I'm going through that season, struggle in my heart with it. But understand, I will only have, and you will only have, the peace and joy that God wants us to have if we truly believe these things in our heart. So we see, number one, the reality of the seasons. Number two, the reaction of the seasons of life. And then number three, and real quickly, and we're done here, the reminder through the seasons of life. There's a reminder. You say, what reminder is that? Think about this for a moment here. Everything that you and I are dealing with, you, 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 you make the list. You, you th every season of life, every change in life, every trial in life, every tragedy, every heartache. Do you understand something? It will be over one day. Amen. It's going to be over. Right. Everything of the here and now is uh, temporary. Amen. It's temporary. In 396 verses of the Bible, we read the phrase, and it came to pass. Amen. You may be in the midst of something, and you're thinking, I can't, I, is this ever going to end? Is it ever going to end? It is going to end. Amen. Now, we may leave this world with that trial, but it's going to end. Uh, again, the ultimate deliverance for the believer is heaven. Amen. We're going to be in heaven with the Lord. Uh, and one day, understand, you and I are never going to have to deal with any changes in life, any trials, any tragedies. No more hospitals, no more nursing homes, no more doctors. One day, it'll all be over. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I want to finish well. Amen. Don't you? There's too many saints that finish bitter, upset, angry at the world. It's not supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be that way. I, I, I think of Lib Maloney is one of the ones I think of. I'll tell you what. Talk about a lady that finished with the joy of the Lord. I mean, think about it. Ninety... 99 years on this earth. For me, that would have been more than enough. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm in my mid-50s now, and I'm already saying, you know, it's okay. It'd be all right, Lord. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, I want to do your will. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, you know. Uh, 99. And I remember the last time I saw her, just singing and praising God and Amen. happy the in the Lord. the Lord. Don't you want to finish that way? Amen. then don't allow the seasons of life to get you bitter. Amen. Think biblically, Amen. and you'll finish with the joy of the Lord. Amen. You know, we sing the words, sometimes the day seems long. Our trials hard to bear. Amen. We're tempted to complain, to murmur, and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over. In God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. Amen. Don't miss it. So bravely run the race. Amen. Till we see Christ. Let's finish well. Amen. Let's pray.